Alright, in this video, we just finished looking at transversals, and so the last thing we need to check out for this is equations of lines. Remember, equations of lines can be written in point-slope or slope-intercept form, and then the slopes can be used to determine if lines are parallel, perpendicular, or oblique. So the first thing we want to talk about is what our forms look like. So my point-slope form, point-slope, I'm going to squeeze it in here. form looks like y minus some given y value equals my slope times x minus some given x value. Okay, And so when we use this, we leave this looking exactly like this. We don't solve it at all. The only simplification we do is if I end up with a minus a negative, I need to turn it into a positive. Or if I have minus a zero, I just end up with y. Or if I have x minus 0, I just end up with m and then an x. And I don't have to write the parentheses anymore. Okay? So that's point-slope form. And then the other form is slope-intercept form. And that's going to be the one you focus on a lot, and especially way back in Algebra 1 and probably algebraic reasoning. And my slope-intercept form, oops, I forgot my e. Squeeze it in there. Intercept form is going to be your y equals mx plus b. That's the one we see a lot, especially when you're trying to graph. It makes it real easy to graph. Okay, And then we are going to also look at are our lines, when we look at pairs of lines, are they parallel? My symbol for parallel. Are they perpendicular, the upside down t, or oblique? And there's no symbol to represent oblique. Okay. All right, so number one, they want me to write this in slope-intercept form, which is the y equals mx plus b. And what's really great is they already gave me the m, and they already gave me the b. So all I have to do is just fill it in. y equals m, two-thirds, x plus b, which is 7. If my b is a negative, then instead of doing plus a negative, whatever the number is, I would just put minus that, num that number, and that's okay to do that simplification. Okay, so there's my first one. It is still in slope-intercept form. Okay, for my second one, it wants it to be in point-slope form. So it's going to be like this one here, where I'm going to do y minus a given y. My given y is a negative 1. Even though there's already a minus there, I have to put the negative 1. Equals m, my slope is 3 halves. And then x minus and then the given x value, which they gave me a 7. Okay, And we don't want to leave it like this, simply because, remember, I said we don't want to have double negatives or zeros. So since I have this double negative right here, I'm going to rewrite this as y plus 1 equals 3 halves times x minus 7. Okay. Now, on the assessment... When we did this earlier in this, in this marking period, a lot of you went ahead and you distributed and you subtracted and you set it equal to y. Once you do that, you're no longer in point-slope form. You've moved it to slope-intercept form. If they ask you for it to be in point-slope form, you have to stop right here. You cannot keep simplifying. You're no longer in the correct form if you keep trying to solve this and simplify it for y. Okay. All right, the next one, slope-intercept form, which again is my y equals 2 thirds x plus, or y equals mx plus b. My problem is they didn't give me my slope like they did last time. They also didn't give me the b value like they did on number one. So I'm going to have to do this in a couple steps. The first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to find my slope. So I know to find my slope, I'm going to subtract my y's over subtracting my x's. So I'm going to start with the second y, negative 1 minus my first y9 over, then I'm going to start with my second x value, negative 12, minus my first x value, which is 3. So my difference in y's over my difference in x's, and make sure you stay consistent. The second one minus the first one, the second one minus the first one. Negative 1 minus 9 is a negative 10. Use a calculator if you need to. Negative 12 minus 3 is a negative 15. My negatives will cancel each other out, and I'll end up with 5 goes into 10 2 times, and 5 goes into 15 3 times. So just like before, I have a slope of 2 thirds. 
okay? But again, they didn't give me my B value. So I'm gonna have to put it in my point slope form first, so I look just like this, and then I do wanna solve it for Y. So that way I can figure out what my slope is gonna be, or what my Y intercept, sorry, we already know the slope, what my Y intercept is gonna be, okay? All right, so I'm going to put it in my point slope form and then solve it for Y. So Y minus, and then I get to pick, I have two Y values to choose from. I get to pick whichever point as long as I stay with that point the whole time. So sometimes I'll circle it. If you have one that's positive all the way throughout, I would go with that one because then you know you're not going to have to deal with double negatives. So I'm going to use my Y value, my given Y value, equals the slope we just found it, two-thirds, times X minus, and then the given X value, and we don't want to use this one because I circled this one, three. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute in my slope, my two-thirds. Distribute it here and distribute it here. So y minus 9 equals two-thirds times x is two-thirds x. And two-thirds times a negative 3 is going to be a negative, And it's going to be 2 times 3, which is 6, over 3, because that's really over 1, right? So we're going to multiply 2 times 3 is 6. 3 over 1 is 3. 6 over 3 is 2. Okay, use your calculator for that if you need it. Okay, all right, so now I just need to get y by itself, so I'm going to add 9 on both sides. And I'm going to get y plus 0, which is just y, equals 2 thirds x, and then a negative 2 plus a 9 is a positive 7. Look, these two happen to be the exact same lines. That's not always going to happen, just happen to happen here. Okay, those two come out to be the same line. These two are both in slope intercept form because I can see my slope and I can see my y intercept. Okay, all right, last but not least, right here, oh, it says number three. Let's change this to a four because we're going to need to number them down here later. All right, through these two points, and I want it in point slope form. So what's nice is I'm going to have to put it in, even if I wanted it in slope intercept, I'd have to put it in point slope form first and then solve, but they just want it in point slope form, so I can leave it here once I'm done. But I am going to have to find my slope first because they didn't give that to me like they did before. So again, remember, we're going to do our subtract our y's and subtract our x's. So my y's are 1 and negative 5, so 1 minus a negative 5. You do have to put the minus and the negative. Then my x values are 2 minus 6. This becomes a positive, so really 1 plus 5, which is 6, and then 2 minus 6 is a negative 4. My negative comes out in front. 3 goes into, or sorry, 2 goes into 6 3 times. 2 goes into 4 2 times, so negative 3 halves. Okay, now I get to pick either one of these points I want. So if I choose this positive one, because remember I said if I can, I like to choose positive points just because then I don't have to deal with double negatives. My answer would be y minus the given y equals the slope, negative 3 over 2, times x minus the given x, which is 2. Okay? If we had chosen the other point, we would have done y minus the given y, which is a negative 5, equals the slope, negative 3 halves, times x minus the given x, 6. And then we would have just had to change this double negative to a plus sign. And both of these equations, if I were to graph them, they would give me the exact same graph. Okay. All right, and then the very last thing we're going to look at here, it says, is the equation 6x plus 4y equal 24, parallel, perpendicular, or oblique, when compared to each of these equations above? Okay, so in order to know that, I need to know what the slope of this equation is. So I need to solve it for y, because that's going to be the easiest way, because if it's solved for y, then the, the number in front of the x will be the slope. So I'm going to get y by itself, so I need to get the 4y by itself first. So I'm going to move my 6x to the other side by subtracting it, okay? Now, I'm not doing 24 minus 6, right, because the 6 has the x on it. So I end up with 4y 
equals, these are not like terms, so I have to keep them separate. I usually put the value with the x in the front, just because that way it looks like mx plus b. Okay, then we need to divide by 4, and we have to divide everything by 4. So 1y equals negative 6 over 4 is a negative 3 over 2x plus 24 divided by 4 is 6. Okay, so my slope, if this asks me for my slope and I put negative 3 halves x, that's incorrect. My slope is just the 3 halves. It does not include the x. The x is the coordinate number. Okay, it doesn't include the x. The slope is just the number that's being multiplied to the x. So now I want to compare it to these other angles. So when I look at number 1, my y equals 2 thirds x plus 7, I want to know is it parallel, which means they're going to have the same slope. Is it perpendicular, which is going to be the opposite and the reciprocal slope? Or if it's neither one of those, then we call it oblique. So when I look at number one, I have negative three halves and a positive two thirds. So they're definitely not the same. Are they opposite and reciprocal? I have a positive two thirds and a negative. So positive and negative, they are opposite. Are they reciprocals? Two over three, three over two, Yes, so they are both opposite and reciprocals. We can say these are perpendicular, which you can either write out with the symbol like that, or if you don't remember the symbol, it's good in your notes to write down next to the symbol what it means. Okay, for number two, y plus one equals three halves times x minus seven. So number two, they are opposite. They're not the same, right? Because I have three halves for my slope and I have negative three halves. So I have a positive three halves and a negative three halves, which means they're not the same. So they're not parallel. Are they opposite reciprocals? Or are they perpendicular? They are opposite. I have a positive three halves and a negative three halves. So positive, negative, they are opposite. But are they reciprocals? Three halves, three halves. They have not been flipped over. They have to do both of these things in order to be perpendicular. Sometimes y'all accidentally call them perpendicular if they're just opposite. Or you accidentally call them perpendicular if they're just reciprocals. It has to do both of those. So these are neither parallel or perpendicular, so we call them oblique. Okay? When I look at three, remember three and one were the exact same line. So if it was perpendicular on the first one, it's going to have to be perpendicular on the third one because I've got a negative and a positive, so they're opposite. 2 over 3, 3 over 2, they're also reciprocals, so this one is also perpendicular. Okay, and last but not least, I have two equations that would both graph to the exact same line. They both have a slope of negative 3 halves. So negative 3 halves, negative 3 halves, they are the exact same slope. So these are, for number 4, parallel. My symbol for parallel, sometimes they have them tilted like I just drew them. Sometimes they're exactly straight up and down. These are parallel. Okay, hopefully that helps you if you are struggling with your point-slope form and your slope-intercept form. Remember, when you're doing point-slope form, once you get to here, you don't keep solving for y, because if you keep solving for y, that moves you into slope-intercept form. So you really have to read which one, which form is it asking you for. Okay? Thank you so much for watching.